Hi, and welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author, and welcome back to my quilting room. Today, we are going to continue with our Scraptastic Scrap Quilts, and we are going to continue piecing the back. Now, I've had a lot of questions about the backing. Um, if you are going to just move ahead and you don't want to put any borders and you don't want to make a scrappy back, you don't have to. Um, so the amount of yardage that you will need for that is about five yards, and that will give you enough to do the entire back. It gives you enough room um, to a lot for shrinkage while you're doing the quilting process, and also you should have enough left over to make binding. If you choose to do your binding um, with that same fabric that you're going to do your backing with. If you're not, then you will need to adjust otherwise meaning you will have to take down your yardage. So you will need to measure out your quilts and then you will need to figure out how much you need, um, how much fabric you need for that. Um, I like to use the Robert Kaufman calculator. It's an app that you can find on your phone. I did a brief tutorial on that um, on a Sewing Talk Tuesday. We just kind of went through it, talked about it, kind of talked about how to use it. Um, so you can actually go into that app and put in the width and the length of your quilt and it will tell you how much backing you need. Um, I will link that, um, that video here. I will try to find it and link it here. Um, you'll find that in the description box down below, by the way. So make sure you check there. So we are going to just get into it. All right, so um, I have gone ahead and started putting some of this together. So today we are going to be putting these things together. I'm going to show you how I have run out of fabric because remember, it's scrappy on the back. So because it is scrappy, I cannot give you exact measurements of how much fabric you're going to need for the backing because number one, I don't know what kind of scraps you're working with. And I can only go off of the scraps that I'm working with. So the whole thought process on this is for you to use your own stash, your own scraps, and to get creative and do what you want to do with it. Now, I have given you kind of a baseline as to what I'm doing, and you're more than welcome to do it the same way that I am. Um, but just remember, you might have more than I do. You might have more... Um, jelly roll strips than I do or I might have more than you and so we have to improvise as we go along and that's what I'm trying to get you to do is to think outside of the box because the back does not have to be perfect we are making a work of art so let your creative juices just flow <laughs> we're pulling from our stash and our scraps, and we are putting a backing together. That's all that we're doing. So I'm sorry, but I cannot give you exact measurements for that just because I don't know. So um, so we're gonna get into this. We're gonna start, I'm gonna flip the camera and I'm gonna show you what I have done so far. Um, now, I just wanna tell you what I have up here so that you know what you're looking at when you look at the quilt wall. So I have, the actual quilt top that we made with the um, scraps and made it the 3D illusion. Um, I have that on there and I'm just piecing the um, backing as I'm going. I'm just layering it on top of that quilt top. So you'll see some of the quilt top peeking through. So we're just gonna go ahead and start looking at that now. This is what I have so far, and I think it looks really neat, to be honest. Uh, so we are going to start filling in that center row where you're seeing the quilt top peeking through. Um, and the black and the white that you're seeing around the border edge is the actual border from the, um, the quilt top itself. So... I will be bordering this one as well, this backing. So I'm gonna just 
move this up a little closer so you can see what this looks like. You can see those are the strips that we had left over from our front. These ones right here. And um, this is what the bottom one looks like. This one reminds me kind of of a waterfall. I just think it's so incredibly beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I have cut already. And we're going to start putting this together now. I also wanted to show you my Quilting Queen t-shirt that I made. I think it is adorable. If you're interested in one of these, I'll have these available in my Etsy store. And uh, so you can check it out there. You can change the color of the jewel that you want. This one is royal blue. I can do them in red, all different colors. So I just wanted to throw that out there real quick because we are all Quilting Queens. All right, so here's what I have now. I have to sort through this, I apologize, because my grandson played with these. Um, so let me make sure <laughs> that I have the right files. Oh, he thought these were cute. So he was covering up his little stuffed animal with them. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to alternate here. So the way I lay these out, I sewed these in the three strips, as I showed you before, and we bordered this. Now what I do to lay them out is I take one and I lay it horizontal. The next one will be vertical. Now you could decide which way you want to do it. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you want your bottom piece facing or if you want your top piece facing it's it really is entirely up to you um so what i will do now since i have that laid out then i will take my next piece and i will flip this one upside down so i'm just alternating it making it look a little bit different and And then I'm going to take this top one, this one, I'm going to, wait, no, I'm not. I'm going to stay consistent. That's right. Confusing myself. You can flip this any way you want. I just have my pattern going a specific way. So I'm just laying it out this way. Okay. And it looks like this one is a little bit short, so I might have cut too much off. So what I'm going to do here, so if this happens to you, and you have one that's too short, I'm going to teach you how to fudge this. <laughs> Don't be like me. So here's what happened. When I trim this, I must have trimmed too much off. So you can see that that is quite a bit off right here. Probably about half an inch to be exact. But when I flip it this way, it works fine. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to swap that one out and then put it like so. And then it matches up perfectly. Ha! So just a little trick. Play with your blocks if you boo-booed like I did. I'm glad that happened because it does happen in sewing. And I don't have enough fabric to go and remake that block. So this is actually going to work out really well. So now I'm just going to check my blocks and I want to make sure that they are all lined up the way that I want them to be. And they are. So now what I will do is I will go to the sewing machine and I will put my right sides facing each other and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam down and I'm going to do this for all of them. And I'm just going to attach this whole row by doing that. Okay. I'm gonna just press this now. Just gonna press that seam there. And do the same with this one. So you can see how we attached the row. Okay, 
is how we press it. Now you should have a row like that. So I will finish doing this uh, with the other row and then we will continue um, working on our backing. All right, so we are now ready to put our um, our other pieces up here on the board so that we know what we're looking at here. So I will be putting this one right here. And I know it is missing the border, I get that. So just bear with me here for a second. So we're just gonna pin this on here because we wanna be able to look at what is what is needed okay so um if you are in this dilemma too this is a good way to see what needs to happen with your with your quilt and uh so you can see how that looks really cool i don't know i'm pretty excited about this guys all right so I'm gonna go pin this back up and um, then I'll come back on. All right, so you can see that we have that open space there that we need to fill. And I've run out of strips to do this with. So what I have left, and I'll show you, are these two strips. And they're pretty long and I will probably use these to border those two. And then I originally had some leftover squares of strips that I had that I didn't use in my rows. And so I thought, well, I'll just sew these together to make this border on the edge here. Let me move out of your way right here. So that, I'm gonna to stick to that same plan. Um, but what I want to do, I'll show you. Okay, I've added our strips now. So you can see that I've done that. So what I'm gonna do with this piece here is I'm actually going to cut this in half. I'm going to cut this piece in half. So if you have some leftover blocks like I did, sew them together. And I just altered, I alternated mine. So if you, um, if you don't want to do it like that, you don't have to. You can have yours all going vertical. You can have them all going horizontal. Again, it's your quilt. So um, I'm just trying to make this so that I have enough stripping for to um, strip the blocks. So, and as you could see, I ran out. So that's what I'm doing here, just so you know. Um, and I'm just using the quilt wall so that you can visually see how I'm putting this together um, after running out of my jelly roll strips. So use what you have is what I'm trying to say. And if you need to lay it out, that's what you need to do so that you can see what you're doing. Um, it's, it's very helpful when you can visually see what is going on with your, with your quilt. So once we get this cut, then we will start focusing on that center piece that we are still missing some fabric in. And so I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. And it's going to be really cool, but I'm um, just, just stay with me here. Okay. Cause we're just about there. So I've just folded this piece in half and I am just gonna cut it straight down the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so, so this is seven and a half. I'm just going to line it up there. So I'm going to cut on the third line here. 
I'm just going to use my ruler. And I'm just kind of guesstimating too, okay? And now that's cut. And now we have this strip. And, and this worked out perfect because now I can cut these in half. And they are going to be the perfect size for both my sides. So this takes care of both of those sides where I was missing that. So I'm just going to use my scissors to cut that in half. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And I know it's going to fit because I measured it. I walked over to the quilt wall and I measured it. So that's done. We're going to sew the pieces together and then we are going to add the borders. I have my strip, my row right here, and I also have my last, one of my last jelly roll strips. We're gonna sew this onto the bottom of this row. You can pin this on, you can clip this on. I'm just gonna sew it on here. I'm gonna line it up and then I'm gonna use quarter inch seam allowance on this. And I am just going to sew straight down and sew the strip on. Okay, that's done. And now we are ready to put our strip that we just cut in half. We're gonna put that on here. So I'm just gonna line this up on the side. And I will sew quarter inch seam. All right, so you should have something that looks like this now. If you're following along with me, you should have something that looks a bit like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our other piece that we had up on our quilt wall that had the borders around it, and we are going to attach these two together. And this is just like anything. It's just like um, all the other ones that we have put together. We're gonna take our right sides facing each other. You're gonna take the end that doesn't have the border on it, and you're gonna put it right sides facing each other with this end here. And you can clip this or you can pin it. And I actually suggest maybe doing that if you're not comfortable with uh, just sewing straight down. So that is what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna sew that straight down quarter inch seam. All right, so now you should have something that looks like this once you have it all sewn together. Okay, so um, go ahead and do that. I am going to finish this part off camera. I'm gonna sew all those pieces together just like we just did here. <laughs> and then we'll talk about this part. As you can see, I have gone ahead and sewn the pieces together. And now I'm gonna show you what we're going to do with the leftover scrap pieces that we had from those green pieces. And um, so get your scraps ready. So this is what I have left from cutting off of those strips that I had. You can see it's all just a lot of just scrappy little pieces. And that's okay because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew this, all of this together, and I am just going to create my own block. And then I'm going to do something really cool with that block. There will be no rhyme or reason to how I'm putting these together. I am just gonna start sewing these scrappy pieces together. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Just gonna start sewing. So if you're gonna do this with me, then you'll want to just 
so and so and so these scrap pieces until you make a complete um, block so that you'll have enough fabric to do anything with it really. Some of it's going to be off. It's going to be shorter than it's, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a hodgepodge. <laughs> okay, so I have this little four inch ruler and my piece actually ended up being about nine. So nine inches by, by six. So nine by six. So we're going to take a three inch ruler right here. I'm just going to cut that portion off and then I'm just going to cut around my little square here. So we have something that looks like that. I'm going to do it again on this piece. And I'm going to try and pull in a lot of those fabrics that we cut. Now, I will have some more scrap left over. And I'm going to tell you, I don't think we're going to use it. So. Now we have these two pieces that look like that. And I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to figure out which one of these I want to use in my project here. And to be perfectly honest, I think I'm going to lean towards this because that is really going to pop. Because I'm also going to trim this just like we did the other one down to the, the four inch block. I will be sewing a quarter of an inch all the way around. All right. So now we're ready to cut these. By now you probably realize that we're making a pinwheel block. So we're gonna cut from diagonal corner to diagonal corner. So I'm just lining up. I use this as my guide, these points here. So I'm just gonna line up on those. Good. Cut. I'm gonna turn my mat. I'm gonna line up on the diagonal again. And I'm gonna try not to move them. And I'm gonna just cut from those center points. I'm gonna keep these together. Right, so I'm just sewing this pinwheel together. I just finished this one. So I will have three total. I found some extra scrap fabric, so I'm gonna use it. Um, and so this is the bottom part. I had it laid out, that's the top. I'm gonna to put these two pieces together and I'm gonna bud them up to each other. So I'm going to nest them, these seams here. This, these two right here. So, and then I'm gonna make sure I've got it going in the right direction, which I do. And then I will sew it down. Now, I do not cut this thread here. And the reason I don't cut this little thread here is because it's gonna hold it together and it's gonna help me to nest these seams. So I'm gonna finger press in one direction and I'm gonna finger press this seam in the opposite direction of that. Then I will take them and put them together, right sides facing each other, and now they should both line up like that. I'm going to use a clip to clip them and hold them into place because I don't want this to move. Pinwheels can be a little bit tricky sometimes, so I always recommend pinning or clipping your pinwheel. And then make sure that you're right on that line, and I am, and then we're going to sew and we're going to hope that we caught everything perfectly. Now what I will do is I will trim that little piece of string that we left right there, as you can see. 
Just gonna trim that. And then we're gonna open it. We are going to trim these blocks down to four inches. So I'm gonna find my center point here on my pinwheel, which is right here. I'm gonna take my ruler. I'm gonna line up two inches here. And I'm gonna trim off the excess. I will do this to all four sides. If you have questions about squaring up, I actually have a video on how to do that and it is in the playlist. I believe it's under quilting tips and tricks. It's everything you need to know about how to square up a block. There it is. We'll do this one as well. You can see how quickly this goes. If you don't have a rotating mat, don't worry about it. You can always turn your fabric or you can turn your your big mat as well, depending on your space that you have. And voila, we're good to go there as well. I'm gonna cut a strip of this green um, this is just some fabric that I've had for a while. I think I picked this up at Joann's when they had like a $2.99 sale on their cotton. You can see it's very wrinkled. Um, so what I'm going to do, because we have probably about, I want to say about 12 inches that we need to cut. So we need this width, plus we need that, we need it this long, and then we need the, which is a yard, and then we need the um, the width to be 12 inches. So I'm just gonna cut that. So that's what we're gonna do here. I like to fold my fabric in half. I just find that it's easier to cut it. But do whatever works best for you because that's what's most important. A little direction turned here today. I don't know what my problem is. All right, so cut there, and then I'm going to come down and do 12. So six. So right here, at one. extra piece aside because we don't need that anymore and you will have two pieces if you folded it in half so you'll have a piece for another project I am just going to because uh, I need to add a little bit to my sides. So I'm just gonna cut two pieces here, four inches. So four by 12. And I'm done with this. <clears throat> so this is the piece that you'll have left over. You're gonna wanna cut a total of eight inches off. So, um, cause you, if you're making it the same way I am, you'll be short a little bit on the sides. So what I'm going to do, so you know, is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to put one of our little four by 12 inch strips. And I'm gonna sew it onto the side. I'm gonna use a quarter inch and I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. All right, so I really like the way this is looking got the pinwheels up there the three pinwheels they're not centered perfectly um, at this point um, I am going to start appliquing these and I'm going to show you how we do that you could cut these apart and piece them I'm not going to do that I'm just going to applique and so let's get into that 
So I just ironed this in half and then I ironed it in half again. And I did that so that I could find my center point for my pinwheel so that when I go to applique this on, I just line this up with the center here. Now I'm gonna pin this so that I, I have it. So now that's on there correctly, it's right in the middle. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna move it over to this edge and I'm gonna just pin it. Now, I am putting these that in a diamond shape. So if you wanna do them in a different shape, if you wanted to do them square like that, that would be fine. Um, but I kinda of like the way they look on point here. So that's how I'm going to do this. I'm gonna just pin them and make sure that they're good to go. So now it's fine. All right, so now is a really good time to use your decorative stitches if you have some on your sewing machine. I am going to be using a really cool one. It's got a curve on it. Um, it's almost like a curved blanket stitch. I'm gonna try and move you up a little closer there so you can maybe see. And I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna needle up, needle down because I don't want um, everything bunching up on me here. Actually, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we're just gonna get started on this. Now, if you find that you need a little more stability on the back of your fabric, you can always use stabilizer. And I normally would, I highly recommend it. But because I know not everybody has stabilizer, I'm gonna show you what it's like without it. And I'm just gonna turn it and I'm just gonna continue on. And this goes very quickly. Just adds a really nice touch to your project. And I'm just gonna turn and I'm gonna just continue. So the way that you'll know if you need stabilizer is if your fabric starts to pucker. That's how you'll know. You can also stabilize it with a piece of batting. But you'll probably want to cut that batting away before you quilt this. So I can see where I might have my, um, where I might have an issue in the future. So I'm just going to go back over this because I want to make sure that it catches all of those edges there. And we have our first one done. This is what it looks like on the back side that nobody will ever see. <laughs> so I'm going to continue doing that and then I'll show you what it looks like. Here is what we have. So it looks amazing. You can see that we did the applique around there. Now, I know it's not exactly perfect, like on this one, I wanna show you in case you miss. It's okay because we are going to quilt 
over this anyway, but we wanted to do the applique to hold this down. Plus it gave us a really good opportunity to use our decorative stitches. So this is what we have. Okay, so that is what we have so far. We could keep going, but I feel like I've given you guys an awful lot to do this week. Um, so I want you to focus on getting your rows put, sewn together, get your blocks all sewn together to create the row, border them with your strips, and then sew everything together. Uh, the next thing that you'll need to do is to make the pinwheels for the center piece and get those applique on that center piece. So, um, that is, that is your homework. <laughs> I know it's a lot and I was hoping that we could get through and get this all finished up today, but I just think it's way too much. So I don't want to overwhelm you. I probably have already. So anyway, let's just. Let's just focus on those things that need to be done and next week we'll continue on. So that is actually it for me today. If you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Give this video a thumbs up and help to get lots of views because then YouTube will show it to other people and they'll get to see all the awesome cool projects that we make here. And uh, don't forget to click that little bell You'll, you'll be subscribed. You'll get notified each and every time that I upload a new video and keep on crafting. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget all of the information that you need will be down below in the description box. So just click that little arrow below this video and you'll be able to see all the descriptions, all the links, everything that you need for this, for this project and for other projects. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.